With us today is Brandon Gallops. We call him Big B. You might have heard him on uh, Carl Gallops show. Carl Gallops, Pastor Carl Gallops. There's no coincidence. They're related. Uh, and they do a show every Friday night. And you want to get this called Freedom Fridays. You want to get there, go to carlgallops.com. You can find out all the information there and follow what they're doing. It's amazing work. Brandon has a very special ministry. He is working with men who are addicted to something, mostly opiates. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's an epidemic sweeping across our country today. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Well, Mike, thank you so much for having me, brother. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And and like you just said, and allude, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me back to hear the Watchman uh, in August in Long Island. Looking very forward to that and would encourage people to do exactly what you told them. Find a way to get there, be there. Uh, it's going to be a great time and I'm so looking forward to it. But uh, but yes, I am. Uh, I mean, I'm so blessed to be the associate pastor at Redeemed Ministries uh, in Cleveland, Alabama. And uh, as a part of my duties there, I am the director of what we call our Healing and Recovery Center. Uh, and that uh, is specifically a ministry for men that are seeking to leave behind uh, the demonic grips and lifestyle of addiction. Uh, and as you well know, Mike, uh, this, this epidemic literally of addiction is sweeping our country and our world right now. Uh, the number one killer in the United States for age group 55 and under is overdose death right now in the United States. That is that is a staggering, staggering figure right there. And I like the fact that you bring in there that it's part of the demonic plan to take over. And what I really like, and folks, you need to listen to this one, what they do through Redeemed Ministries and their facility for the men they have there uh, is they use the Bible. And they use prayer and they teach about Jesus and they, they get people to be believers and trust in the Holy Spirit to save them. Not some rock or a tree that someone refers to as my higher power. You know, they bring them to the Lord to be saved, which is what happened to me like a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, Brandon, Talk to us about the statistics. Talk to us about what it is that you guys feel that you do differently and how people can find you. Yeah, well, j just a few of the stats, Mike, and I'm just going off the top of my head, but uh, 2016, so obviously we're in 2018 now, so two years ago, uh, there were over 64,000 overdose deaths in the United States. 64,000 overdose deaths in the United States. Uh, over 55,000 of those were attributed to uh, heroin overdoses through the, uh, the substance that they're using to cut heroin with called fentanyl. And uh, so 50, over 55,000 of the 64,000 were attributed uh, to heroin overdose, which, of course, comes from the opiate family. Uh, and, and, you know, so many of these people's addiction starts out in a very legitimate manner. You get a guy that hurts his back and uh, the doctor gives him some pain pills and and he probably legitimately needs something to help him take care of that pain at first. And then before you know it, uh, he can't live without the he can't live without the pills. And then all of a sudden he's addicted uh, and then the doctor won't give him any more or won't give him as many as he needs. And so he finds something on the street and then eventually that road for a lot of men uh, and women, of course, but uh, so unfortunate uh, oftentimes leads to heroin use. And so here we are in the midst of this epidemic. Uh, uh, so listen, two thirds of our country, over 200 million people in this country, Mike, are um, currently using some type of prescription medication. Now, let me be very clear. I'm not anti-medicine. Medicine is in and of itself is a gift from God, but we do have to be aware with what we're dealing with when we're dealing with prescription medication, uh, specifically mind-altering medication. Uh, you know, d depression medications, what we would call SSRIs, uh, antipsychotics, uh, the, the numbers are staggering for the amount of people that are on those type of drugs. Uh, my, my dad just sent me an email this morning and I don't remember the number, uh, but my goodness, I think it was, I, don't, I, I, want, I want to say it's 100 million that are on some type of, 
uh, depression medication or something. Oh, no, it was some, some type of medicine that can cause depression uh, in a person. Uh, there are approximately 80 million uh, 18 and unders in this country. 80 million. Um, 10 per, over 10 percent of those uh, are on some type of, uh, of behavior controlling medication. Uh, it's about 12 percent of that 80 million number are on some type of behavior mod modification medication. Uh, whether that be for depression uh, or for a, you know ADHD, that's the that's the thing now. Apparently, every child that talks too much or just acts like a kid has ADHD. Uh, so so you know just because someone has a doctor's note for something doesn't mean that they don't have a problem. Uh, just admitted a man into our program yesterday that uh, you should see he's withdrawing off of the antipsychotic uh, Seroquel. And uh, man, the withdrawal symptoms are just brutal, you know, and we're loving him through that and nurturing him through that and, and keeping him safe during that process. But uh, this epidemic is certainly sweeping the country. And, 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 you know, Mike, it's interesting. I always make the point. You go all the way back to the garden and what did Satan attack in the very first sin that we see? He attacked the mind of Eve. He said, did God really say he planted a seed of doubt? When you get to the New Testament, to Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, what does Satan attempt to attack? In the, in the God, his mind, the first thing he said to him, if you really are the son of God. So if Satan, if he attacks the mind consistently, we see it throughout scripture. If his constant attack is on the mind, wouldn't it just make sense that he would attempt to get his grips into things that alter the mind and the way that God designed the mind to work? And my opinion is that's what we're seeing with this epidemic sweeping the country uh, and the world is Satan has found a way to get his grips on people's minds, thus giving him direct access to be able to control different behaviors and and different thought processes uh, leading all the way to suicide. You know, suicide and addiction go hand in hand uh, and there's no more. What does Satan seek to do? He seeks to uh, kill, steal and destroy. And that's what that's what we're up against, brother. Yeah, amen to that, Brandon. And you know, you know, folks, people have the perception when we talk about heroin addiction and we talk about these addictions that it's like it's the riffraff, it's the people that are on the streets, it's the people that are in the ghetto that are doing this. And they have pictures of people with needles in their arms. And that's just not true. I mean, uh, smoking heroin has been around for ages. It's called chasing the dragon. And right. the big misnomer about that, and I was guilty of this, uh, I felt that, okay, well, I'm not shooting it in my vein, so I can't possibly be an addict. You know, I mean, it's just you couldn't be a junkie. Um, now, what, what are you seeing? What types of people come into your facility? They're from all walks of life, aren't they? Absolutely, Mike. Uh, you know, it's interesting because you're right. That's the per the person who has never struggled with chemical dependency. Uh, and check this out because they, that's a whole topic of conversation for another time. But if you've never struggled with chemical dependency, that's exactly the mindset that most people have. Well, that's the junkie over there on the corner or the homeless guy, the bum begging for money. Uh, when in fact, you know, I'll tell you, uh, Mike, you know, uh, very thank you, Jesus, that chemical dependency was never one of my struggles. I knew a lot of people that that was their struggle. I employed a lot of people that that was their struggle. And I actually, at one time, I had a lot of friends that were, uh, that, that, that sold drugs. Um, you know, I mean, I grew up, uh, the nineties, it, it was crack was the drug of choice. And so, I, you know, I knew a lot of guys that sold crack. And at that time in my life, I wasn't living for the Lord. And, and they were good friends of mine. I'd hang out with them. Thank you, Jesus. I never touched it, never sold it, never did any of that. But I've been with them when they pulled into a multi-million dollar neighborhood and pulled up to a to, literally to a million dollar home to, to take crack to somebody, you know. Uh, and, and the saying within those circles is simply this, dope doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care what skin color you are. It doesn't care what side of town you're from. It doesn't care how much money you do or don't have, brother. It doesn't care if you do or don't go to church. All 
you know, uh, addiction can apply to all walks of life. I've got men in this program that, yes, have been homeless on the street. Absolutely stereotype of what you would think. All the way to men who have had successful businesses and lost it all because they got wrapped up in something that took control of them. So there is absolutely not one person who struck. Listen, Mike, there are millions and millions of people sitting on church pews every Sunday morning that are successful business people that are uh, that are deacons in their church, that are their pastors in the pulpits every Sunday morning. that couldn't make it through a day without their Laura tab or without their Percocet or without their Klodopin to go to sleep at night. Uh, on and on and on or without their Zoloft or, you know, their, their addiction just is so far reaching. It is not just a guy on the street corner begging for money. I can assure you. Well, amen. And, and thank you for sharing that. Now, Ma, I'm going to ask you a question that the, and this is a uh, opinion based question. Um, but what do you think would what do you think Jesus would say if if he was here today? What would he be saying to all of us? Uh, to all of us as the church or to the people stuck in addiction? People stuck in addiction. To the people stuck in addiction? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, Mike, here, here's, I just actually taught on this in Sunday school last Sunday. It was a topic of conversation was how do I minister like Jesus did? And I think that we have to look at John 1 14, which says that uh, the word took on flesh. It dwelt among us. And, and the last part of that verse says, and he came from the father full of grace and, and truth. I'm a firm believer, Mike, that every single thing in the Bible is in order. Not in chronological order necessarily, but it is in order. And I think that those words, grace and truth, are absolutely in order. What would Jesus do? I believe he, he would do what we here at Redeem do our best to do. And that is the person that's stuck in the depths of addiction that their family has given up on them, rightfully so many times they've lost their children they've lost their wife or their husband their mother father they have nowhere to turn we love them we put our arm around them we love them we feed them we bring them in and give them a place to stay but ultimately we have a responsibility to speak the truth of god's word to them and it's simply this doesn't matter what your sin is there's only one solution to that sin and that's the saving grace of jesus uh, of jesus christ and i think that's exactly what we see jesus do throughout scripture so i have no reason to believe he wouldn't do the same thing today uh let me give you a couple of examples think of the woman brought to jesus caught in adultery by law she could have been stoned to death jesus could have condemned her to death he showed the ultimate form of grace by saving her life, her physical life. But then before she left, he looked at her and he said, go and leave your life of sin. He told her the truth. Your sin is what got you to the point of death. Now you better go and leave it. Same thing with the woman at the well. This is a woman that Jesus should have never even spoken to by the standards of the day. She was a different color than he was, from a different culture than he was. All the same things that we deal with in our world today. Jesus spoke to her. He acknowledged her. He loved her. But then he confronted her with truth. Woman, go and get your husband. Well, I, I, you know, uh, I'm not, I don't have a husband. Yeah, you're right. You've had five, and the man you're currently with now is your husband. He told her the truth, and she responded to it. And so I think that's exactly what Jesus would do today. He would put his arm around people. He would love them. He would eat dinner with them. He would feed them dinner. But ultimately, he would tell them, leave your life of sin behind. This is why I came and died on the cross is for you, for you today. And accept this love, accept this mercy, accept this grace and leave your life of sin behind. I think that's exactly what he would do. Well, Brandon, God bless you for what you're doing there. I mean, it's, it's amazing work. It truly is amazing work. It's life changing work is what you're doing. Well, we're going to give the glory. You know, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm so blessed to have you as part of the Hear the Watchman team because I love people that actually get out there and do the work like you're doing. Now, Brennan, how do people find out about your ministry? How do they find out what's going on and how can they help you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's two ways you can keep up with us. Both of them are through Facebook. Uh, the first one is Redeemed Ministries Church. Uh, you can look that up on Facebook or you can look up Little Blue Cottage Farm. 
Uh, Redeem Ministries Church uh, is the head of our entire ministry. Little Blue Cottage Farm is the name of our farm where the men live uh, and work on the farm here. Uh, you can keep up with the ministry through both of those ways. Of course, we need people to pray for us, Mike. Uh, man, we're, we're very blessed that we get to see. I mean, listen, think about this, brother. I get to see a man who literally is, is at death's door. And I'm the guy that gets to get a phone call from a grown man, oftentimes in tears, begging me for help. Go and pick him up, bring him into our program, feed him and love him, and, and a month later get to see a whole new human being. That is the most rewarding thing I can get. But on the flip side of that, Mike, we are surrounded by darkness. I can't even begin to explain to you the demonic that we deal in, uh, the demonic attacks, the darkness, the, the, the things that come with that, the oppression, the depression, uh, just everything that comes with, with dealing literally in the pits of hell. So we need people to be praying for us. We need people to be diligently on their knees for Redeemed Ministries and for other ministries like us. We don't have a magic bullet. We're just trying to give people Jesus, you know. Uh, and, and I mean, here's the reality, Mike. It takes money to do everything in today's world, you know. Um, we're very blessed. We're not broke. Uh, we're not down to our last dollar, but we're in the process of expansion and growth. Uh, right now, we have the ability to house uh, a total of 18 men. We have 14 men in the program, uh, and, and we could have 18 tomorrow. We're, we're trying to grow ourselves at a responsible rate and not do more than we can handle, but we need money. It's just the bottom line. Uh, and if people want to give to us, uh, we're a full 501c3, fully tax-deductible donations to Redeemed Ministries. Uh, you can send those to P.O. Box 1, Cleveland, Alabama, 35049. And we have a PayPal account uh, that you can get. Uh, the email address for that PayPal account is gwarden, W-A-R-D-E-N, 21, at redeemedmen.com. And so you can you can help us out uh, financially, and, and you know, like I said, it takes money to do everything, brother. We need it. Yeah, Amen. We we understand that certainly here at the Watchman. We we get it. You're doing great work. You're doing God's work, and I'm very proud of you. You know, folks. Again, you know, you really want to one of the one of the biggest advantages of coming to the Hear the Watchman conference in Long Island, New York, is that you get Brandon and his dad in the same room together. Now, that is like having, uh, I mean, they are like a comedy team for Jesus. The two of them, I mean, <laughs> I mean there's four, four times I have to run out of the room to go use the restroom because I'm laughing so hard that I'm gonna pee my pants. But there's more, wait, there's more. If you choke on a piece of steak, both of them can save you like they did to me in Dallas, Texas at the speaker's dinner. If they hadn't been there, I wouldn't be here now. So, you know, you get this whole big packet, you come to hear the Watchman Long Island. So, Brandon, we're looking forward to seeing that, seeing you there. And again, God bless you for all the work you're doing. Well, Mike, I just want to give all the glory to God, man. I, you know, I understand that God uses people to do his work and, and I'm so blessed to be able to be used uh, man, I, I, you know, it, it's crazy. I just, uh, you know, I wish I had been obedient my whole life. Uh, but obviously, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to be obedient now and, and God is honoring that he's honoring the obedience of this ministry as a whole. Uh, our senior pastor here, pastor Chris Gortney, I want to ask everybody out there to keep that man covered in prayer. Um, because you know, he is the founder of this ministry. He is the one that God literally gave dreams and visions to about this ministry. And, uh, the, uh, you know, I know the demonic, uh, attacks and all that I personally experience, and, and he experiences that at a whole nother level. So I want to ask people to pray for him, pray for our ministry as a whole. And we just want to give the glory to God. We're just men, uh, brother Mike, that, that we're doing our best to do what God's called us to do. We make mistakes. We, we get out of line and get out of order and we do our best to admit that and, and hold each other accountable, uh, as the appointed leaders of this ministry. Um, but man, I love you and I love your wife, Miss Jeannie. Thank you for what y'all do with Hear the Watchman. Thank you for the opportunity to come here today and talk about our ministry. And uh, this is real, folks. This I will guarantee you, Mike, every single person that hears this is in some way touched by addiction, whether they personally are struggling with it, a direct family member, an indirect family member, or a friend. I guarantee you that every person listening to this is touched by this epidemic. Thank <laughs> you.
The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.